Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, Next Level Painting. We are coming to you hot with the Chaos Theme Night Titan tutorial. I know I've been promising it for weeks. Feels like years to me. Um, this was a really fun project for me. My brother converted this model. He's my go-to guy on conversions. He makes all my first demon princes, everything, right? He blew it out of the water with you know the, the Lord of Skulls and a Lancer and one billion miles of green stuff. Gotta thank you. Big shout out, Green Stuff Industries. They're the guys who make the Tentacle Maker. Check out their website when you get an opportunity. We're actually doing a giveaway with them. We're going to announce the winners of the giveaway after this series is done, after I do these videos. But the way to enter into the drawing to win some of these products from their website is simple. You share this video. You share this video, YouTube notifies me. I put all those names into a hat and I literally will draw out the winners. That simple. So just share the video, you, you know, you might get an opportunity to win some of these cool things, but check out Green Stuff Industries. You don't have to win something to buy something from them. Really cool guys, love their products. This was so fun to paint. Like I said, uh, the, the, the detail David put into it was amazing. I really had a blast. So please take a look at how this model came together and please just enjoy this journey with me, man. It was so fun. It's an, it was fun to build this tutorial for you guys. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you guys next time, but watch this tutorial and please share the video. Let's do this thing. First color, black metal. As you can see, I primed this guy gray. Uh, I find gray being, you know, a pretty good neutral to jump into. Sometimes I go with black. Uh, I'll be honest, sometimes I just only have one color and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I'm just gonna make it work. So I'm gonna hit this black metal, which is a really good base color for metal. And I'm just gonna tear this thing up. As you can see, just laying it down very evenly, thick in some places, you know, just get inside the cracks. You're really trying to utilize this really dark metal to help you in the late game as you start dry brushing up and everything. Anything you might miss, let's say you just miss something like entirely, maybe it'll go unnoticed because it's so dark in the crevice, you know, like in the, in the recesses. Most things we do are gonna start with dark moving up to light and sometimes moving back to, to dark, like it's just, you gotta just let the process take you where it's gonna go. I know it sounds silly, but it's just the truth, man. It's it's my process. As you see, just you know, it's really it's a really dark metal. Uh, I got it. I got it all over everything. The fur, the hoses, everything. You know, like this is just this is a way to like, utilize your airbrush. Next, we're jumping on one of my all-time favorites, burnt umber. As you guys remember from the Blood Angels video, I show you this really simple way of doing red. It was kind of just to prepare you guys for how I was gonna do the red on this guy. So now I'm just going in with the burnt umber. Everywhere in my mind, I have envisioned red. The burnt umber is there. I'm gonna get this burnt umber all over the metal in some places. Sometimes I just, you're just not gonna be able to help it. It's, it's fine, we're gonna save time. You've seen me utilize this technique in other videos. Painted a lot of stuff metal. Now we're gonna paint the burnt umber. The burnt umber is gonna get back on the metal and we're just gonna go back in and wipe the metal out with the paintbrush. Real big, fast strokes. Super, super easy. It's important to get the burn number on very evenly and with good coverage. Like this is definitely, don't don't, don't miss spots. Like this is got it. This is the base color of the red. And you can see I got a very nice brown. That burnt umber, I mean, this is a classic color. I mean, I mean I've been using burnt umber since I was a kid in like oil painting, you know, like it is a very good base color. Like to just, to, to, I mean, shades and everything. So now this is a red you didn't see me use before in the Blood Engine video, Scorn Red, which is more like a deeper red. I wanted this, this is the blood for the blood guy, you know what I mean? I want there to be more depth to the red, like maybe it's gonna, it's gonna pop, but I want there to be a deeper red, like a, you know, a corn red, maybe Privateer Press was on or something when they called it Scorn Red, I'm not sure. Gonna have to call GW on that one. But you see I'm doing a really basic top-down Zithio highlight on this guy. Just super clean, just let it transition with the brown. As you can see, I mean, it pops out at you already. I mean, with very little work, it's already giving you sick transitions, very poppy. I'm very happy with this time, these combos. Like, I mean, I've been working red for a long time, I've been learning techniques, uh, different techniques even. 
but this is a, the simplest one I use. And here we're gonna jump into the Scarlet Red, which is a really a blood red. Uh, has a little orange mixed into it already. Like it just comes that way. But like, as I was saying to touch on what I was just saying, um, there's a lot of ways to do red. This is like the simplest way, but sometimes it just gives you the best, absolute best results. And we're just gonna continue the Xenthio highlight. Uh, we're just coming from the top down, maybe I'm working a little bit in a 45 degree angle. I don't really overthink it. I just try to make it look good and clean. This will really help pop out the scorn red. As you can see, it's, I mean, it looks bright. It's, it's got bright, but it's got really nice transitions. You know, like that's not something that's easy to do with red. It's something to show you the process. You know, like it took me a long time to figure these things out. So there's not as much transitions as I like, but I'll come back and, and fix that. But you can see the red is definitely there. Like, I mean, it's in there. Now we're gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of a different thing here, man. Like I'm gonna hit that Vallejo Air Orange. I don't use this all the time because it's kind of a hard color to work with. It's not my favorite, but it's very, very subtle. And I like, I'm just working a subtle transition here. So I, I do like it in this situation, but I have used this color a lot, a lot of times before. Haven't really been happy with it, but this is, I think, the place to use it. It's not really a color that you can just start with. You have to work to it. And I mean, you can see it's really subtle. You can barely see anything happening yet, but I'm really laying the, the groundwork for the Troll Slayer Orange, which is quickly becoming my favorite way to highlight red of all time. And now it's, now this is where you're really going against the grain. You know, like you're finding the spots, building that orange into them, you know, popping it out. Like this is where it's gotta be just, this is where you make that exciting transition. This is that, like when you saw the, the Warhound Titan video, you saw the absolute just ridiculous burnouts of the purples and stuff. This is kind of this that version of uh, of you know that technique, but on red. And now, I mean, look at it; it's super subtle, has a lot of transition. You know, it has just that real natural vibe that looks you know beyond normal. Like nothing in nature that's red looks like this, and that's kind of the effect I go for. Now we pull the burnt umber back out. And we're gonna reestablish that transition. You can see the, the the brown is like, you know, I'm going I'm just going back in under the, in the undercarriage. You can see it's it's kind of hard to see in the video, but I am reestablishing a natural transition between the brown and the scorn red, repairing any damage I did by getting a little crazy with my airbrush. You know, just because I want that dark to light transition. Sometimes I just end up wiping it out because I get a little over anxious. A little overzealous with, my, with what I'm doing, but it, you can see it's that easy to fix. I mean, it's. I mean, we're barely, we barely, we're barely doing any work here. But so now what I'm doing is I'm taking a black, I'm, and I'm per, just any black will do. But I like to use the Vallejo Air Black, and I'm going in right at the edges, the very bottoms of where those that burnt umber is hitting that baroque armor trim, and I'm just dropping a little black in there, just just to give it that final definition. Now I take the burnt umber and I kind of just trace into the lines where I feel like I lost a little bit of the transition because just because it's the nature of the airbrush to wipe these things out. So I'm painting in my own transition. Just basically imagine what a wash does. That's what this is doing, but I'm not using a wash. I'm actually just using paints because I want there to be a common pigment between all my shades. So I'm just doing the manual labor on a model this big and just giving it the love that it requires and just hand painting those dark transitions in. Going into those vents, hitting them with a the dark too. I don't know what I'm going to do with the vents at this point. I just know that it's never a bad idea just to throw some of this burn umber in that spot too. You know, like even those little cooling vents on his chest. You just, you just never know. So just, and, it, and you can see it's, it's coming out real clean. You know, like it has that crisp transition now. You know, you know, I mean, it's just, burnt number is just, a, it's one of those colors, you know, like, I, I know I've been talking about burnt number for like five minutes now, but it's, it's a good color. Now I'm coming back in with the highlight, using that Troll Slayer orange again. And I'm dropping a quick edge highlight on those plates, those like, are, I don't know what the, how you would describe them, but they are, you know, like an armadillo's armor plates as they, you know, like the layered plates. I'm going in there and hitting the top parts of those with the, with the that that final highlight we did of orange, but I'm just pure orange, hardcore edging that to give it that final razor edge pop. 
this is a very important thing to do to these types of models. You, you know, you can't can't cut this part out. This has to be done. Let me see if I can't show you what, what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna come in, drop off some highlights, and you can see. I mean, look how much better it looks. It's just the absolute thing that is required to tie in these types of models. And now here's that process I talked about. You gotta come back in and wipe out all the overspray. I mean, don't even overthink it. Grab your black metal, pour a bunch of it out and just go beast mode, just knock it out. Just don't even think about where the fur and the skin is gonna be. Just go in there and get it all done because you'll find yourself being slowed by the paint by numbers process here. Just absolutely slap it down, slather it on and go. I mean, I just, I just love this color too. The Vallejo Airline just has such great coverage. I mean, look at how easy it is to cover with these metals. I mean, GW metals do not do this good of a job in either do private tier, uh, uh, the P3 formulas. It's just such a clean metal. It's And it's uh, pearlized, so it doesn't have the metallic flakes in it. So it does have a different effect. You gotta be, you gotta know what effect you're getting into. This is, it's more of a glitter metal than a, than a metallic flake metal. And now I'm gonna grab some of that steel, just, you know, the brighter version of this metal. And I'm just gonna come in here and do a quick, quick dry brush. This is this is not to be overthought uh, at all. This is really simple. You have a dark metal, grab the next progression of light metals. You should have a few on your desk. And, you know, GW has a bunch, Privateer's a bunch. They, I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. Not, not, even, <laughs> not even something that I probably need to say. But I'm, do, I'm spending some time on that right now, right now, though. Dry brushing with the grain, against the grain, across the grain, whatever I can do to create that antique look. Dragging that brush across the raised, edge, raised edges. And you can see, man, it, it gives you that definition. You know, like now you can see the dark metal interacting with the light metals. This lets you kind of avoid the wash process. When you have a big model like this, oftentimes it's just a, it's just a hazard to wash it all. You know, so I'd rather go with just a really dark metal and just really nice dry brushing technique instead. So the next thing we're gonna do, take some of my classic molten bronze from uh, the P3 line, just come in and hit the Baroque armor trim. This is an obnoxious process. This is the most annoying part of uh, painting these large models. It's coming in there very controlled. Paint by numbers. Get your water right, because you gotta get the consistency of this paint right. You gotta kinda keep going with it. And you don't wanna keep getting slowed down by having to pull more water out or pull more paint out. Get it get it, get it, it all laid out ahead of time, because this is the process that takes the most amount of time. Careful attention, precise paint strokes. Don't get this on the red, because you will hate yourself having to go undo the red. You can see like, you know, I'm just sort of time-lapsing the process here working all the trim in, being very careful, like I said, not to get any strokes or accidentally drag the paintbrush along the red armor. It is almost impossible to fix that kind of mistake when this is all a very nurtured airbrush effect and you have to go in with a paintbrush and try to fix a stray gold paint stroke on red. So I can't emphasize enough, be patient, be methodical with this process. You can see, I mean, it's immediately tightening this model up. I mean, look how different he looks already with just some, some trim painted. I mean, this is like, it gets you back in the game. You're like, oh, I'm getting annoyed. I'm painting all this trim. And then you see how he's coming out. You're like, wait a minute. I'm getting somewhere now. <laughs> it kind of like sometimes it just revitalizes you to keep pushing forward uh, and, and, get, and, get, and get it done. You know, this is one of my favorite models I've painted all year so far. I mean, it's obviously, it's a different category model, you know, having this model converted so heavily, one of a kind opportunity to paint it, that kind of kept me in the game the whole time. So, I, I mean, hopefully you guys get an opportunity to convert something similar to this, or you can apply some of these techniques to your Chaos Marines, to your Mala Fiends, to even your Night Titans. I mean, there's a lot of similarities between this trim and a Night Titan. They're definitely on the same scale of size. You can absolutely apply these highlight techniques to any large model, any large walker model of GW base. And as you can see, the trim is almost done. We have we've got it all clean. 
And I guess now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this earth shade. I, I, I'm in love with this earth shade. And I'm gonna paint, start painting the skulls. Like he's got all these skulls in his, built into his armor. And sometimes when you paint skulls, it's really easy to get caught up in skulls are white. You know, it's actually easier to paint white if you have uh, a neutral foundation first. And I like this earth shade for that. It's just, it's just called earth. Uh, Vallejo air. I painted all earth. And that, that, I consider that my neutral base color. And then just come in with any white while it's still really wet. And just start blending the white in to the earth. And you can see you're creating already an interesting looking uh, like skeleton feature. Like it's got the really ruddy colors in the, in the crevices and, and the bright whites and the peaks. Exactly what you would expect to see from, from a skeleton. You can see there, I mean, as I bring this to the focus, you can see in the fields of his arms. I did it to all the skulls in there. Really easy to see. Gives you that natural vibe. And you can see on his face. I mean, it's, it just came out nice. Really easy techniques, man. All right. Now let's do the same thing to this ridiculous oversized uh, horns <laughs> that, my, that my brother made. I love them and I think they're awesome and they're very fa like fantasy. Like You don't see it very often. So same kind of thing, just put that put that earth on it, get it, you know, get it going smooth and wet, and then start applying your white to it, blending it into the brown. This is just a hand, a hand, really easy wet blend technique. This is not very difficult at all. We're also gonna tighten it up with the airbrush later, but this is just a foundation. It's just I find it easier to do to lay the foundation down with the uh, paintbrush and then go back in with the airbrush on those types of things. So here's one of the colors right here. This is one of the secrets of all my stuff. Reaper, orange brown from their master series. I use this in a lot of places people don't think to use it. Fur. I'm painting the fur all over the, the servo ligaments on this guy. Straight up, thick, even coat of this Reaper orange brown. It looks kind of weird right now, but just bear with me. You'll see what, what, what happens. I mean, it already looks a little bit different. I mean, it's not quite there yet, but it's tightening the model. Bronze Flesh, another cool color from the uh, Vallejo Airline. I'm gonna come through and, and paint all these uh, patches of skin that are like, so it's supposed to be bursting through its skin. Like it's now more demon machine than, than demon. Come in with an elf tone. And same kind of deal as before. We're gonna kind of quickly wet blend the elf tone into the Bronze Flesh. Running out of time here, guys. That's all I have for this week. I'm gonna do a lot more on this guy next week with uh, you know, some washes, some more highlights, some OSL. In the meantime, thanks for watching, players. Let's do this thing, guys. Wash. This is part of the next level process. We're gonna go in heavy with a brown wash. Thick and liberal. A lot of people will say they like to thin their washes out or they like to go real light with a wash. This is not one of those times. We're going heavy, all out. Aggressive transitions, really dark, uh, thick use of the wash. We're gonna come back in and highlight it later so that's you don't have to worry about overusage here. This is just part of my process for creating a realistic and dingy look. It's not next level to just wash it and walk away. We're gonna put it on the skin. We're gonna put it on the fur. And you're gonna start seeing for the first time this fur come uh, coming through, like looking like actual fur. You know, we used that uh, Reaper Orange Brown in the last video. And now we're hitting it with a brown wash. And of course, it's starting to look good. You know, it's it's basically magic. As we remember the old Devil in Mud, I mean, it was, Basically, cheater wash. So coming through, make sure you hit the wash on the, uh, you know, the horns, the the face, or the skeleton, you know, all that stuff. We're gonna immediately jump into the dry brushing technique right after that, though. As soon as it dries, of course, we're using the same orange brown to dry brush back over the orange brown that we hit with that wash. And you see, th that's one of my techniques. I do it all the time, like. Paint a color, wash it, use the same color to dry brush it with. 
Now we're adding a little bit of yellow. Any yellow will do. I'm, pr I'm probably using a P3 yellow right here. Mix a little yellow back in with that orange brown. Drop a little extra highlight in on the orange. You're gonna get a really nice textured look. Come back in with the same bronze flesh from the first video. And we're highlighting the flesh post wash now. This is one of my techniques, like I said. If you're gonna paint it, if you're gonna paint it with bronze flesh, then wash it. Go back to bronze flesh first before any other highlights. Same thing with the skeleton. Uh, whatever colors we use to paint the skull, after the wash, we're coming back in and starting to pull out some of the highlights with it. Hit the nose, hit the brow ridge, etc. You know, really simple stuff. Like the wash in this format is kind of a paint by numbers application. Like the wash shows you where to put the highlights. Uh, the next thing you see me doing in the video is I'm dropping a couple of extra dry brush uh, strokes on the, the pipes where I got some of that brown wash in there. Just want to clean them up, get them back to baseline. And we're going to come in with my favorite technique. Typhus Corrosion. You know me and Typhus Corrosion, we have a, a history together. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna find all the joints, I'm gonna find all the little areas that I think look visually cool. I don't really put almost any thought into where the rush should be, the corrosion should be. I only think about it as an artist. Um, and I like the way it looks here. I'm getting it deep in the cracks, getting it, getting it in, the, in the underbelly, getting it on the knees, and come in hot, man. Like the barrels of the gun on his, on his, on his left arm, is, is dreadlocks, all that stuff. Now that we're done with that, um, I'm gonna go back to the wash. I know I'm going, I'm all over the place in this video, uh, but for some reason, I felt the need to take a break from washing and go into all that typhus corrosion. Maybe it's because I was waiting for the typhus corrosion to dry and it's drying while I'm painting the, the, this gold. So I washed all that, that bronze. And as you can see, I came in with burnished gold and I'm highlighting the tips of it. It's looking good, man. Like I know, <laughs> I know I'm talking, I'm going off on tangents here. I'm trying to catch back up. But as you can see, I've washed all that bronze and came back in with burnished gold and a little bit of the original bronze color kind of mixed together in a blend. And I just found all those points, all those tips, all those edges. And I just did a quick little edge highlight with a quick little wet blend. Super easy. Now let's hit up the, um, the plates, all the armor plates I left off. The reason I left them off is because I was trying to get to all the under trim underneath all those and it would just be impossible with the trim glued on. What were these plates glued on? I'm sorry. Same kind of technique. Hit it with the burnt umber from the first video. Hit it with the scorn red from the first video. And I'm sure we're about to transition into a scarlet red and some orange. It's the same technique, you know, just if it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. You know, <laughs> I love the way it looks and you can see I'm coming in now with the, uh, the brighter colors. Uh, down at the bottom and a lot of people get really literal with the Xenthio highlight for those greaves I like to go from the bottom up on the highlight because I feel like the guy's lurching body creates a shadow on the top so it, it doesn't seem like in your mind it, it, it fits that way to have the highlight come from the bottom but it always looks cool to me so I just keep doing it and now I'm coming back in with the burnt umber and a little black and I'm burning out the edges of these armor plates re you know re-intensifying that that dark transition of course we got to come back in and we got to hit these little trim pieces with bronze molten bronze from the p3 line um and of course this is this is one of those techniques where you got to slow down the the strokes you got to come in smooth and slow and, you know big shout out to my brother on this i mean he green stuffed all those marks all those chaos icons and that uh the symbol of corn on the uh uh what is it the uh crotchal region Coming back in with that Rizzo Rust tech. This is another um, very special technique to me. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just manually, no sponge technique here, I'm going to put the rust exactly where I wanna put it. I'm not gonna let any of it, you know, go wild or, or go random. This is, I, I find that the sponge is not good for this stuff. And as you can see, it's, I mean, it's looking appropriately chaos -y. It's looking like it's, you know, hardly ever been you know maintained and they don't they don't have any tech priest oil in this thing up this thing is just held together by arcane you know chaos power so, you know now i'm kind of feather dry brushing it in you know like there's a lot of techniques you just got to go wild with it just jump in man grab that rizzo rust and just experiment it is a great technical color and i love the extra pop it the next thing we're going to do is of course my oxide effects I love this color too. 
A lot of people tell me they don't like it. I don't care. I love it. And half of what I do is because I love to. So coming in, dropping some streaks, some get that like awesome, you know, corrosion, oxidation effect, you know, just come in the cuts, come in the corners, find the little deep crevices. Um, I like to water this paint down though. This is one of the rare ones I do that too. Like this, this technical effect, it's kind of like a wash, but you're definitely going to get more out of it if you use a little bit of water. That's been my experimentation process with it. I would like to see what you guys think. I don't know how you guys use it, but I'm going to come in here and I'll see. And I, and I guess the, uh, the video is kind of broken up by, by being fast. Like I'm letting certain things dry on one part of the model while I come in and do these other things. So obviously now I'm washing these bronze pieces while I seal coat the body of the night Titan and let that, that dry. Just trying to be as efficient as possible, you know? Come in, come in heavy with this. Be careful not to spill that wash all over the armor, but get a little bit in there to separate the brass bits from the red bits. You do want there to be a little bit of a border there. And that's easily done with a detail brush and a little bit of patience. Like I said, washing is absolutely paid by numbers. It also helps you create a guideline for later highlights. That's something I was saying earlier. You, it kind of shows you where you need to put the highlights and where you need to put the, you know, oxide around the bolts and stuff like that. I mean, and you can see it's uh, it's antiquing these uh, pieces of metal, but they're not looking like that clean, bright metal we have on the rest of the model. It's always important to remember, <laughs> like how much, how how important it is to highlight things. Here's a quick little technique right here. Uh, I'm painting some scratches into the armor. Basically, I put a little wash in the crevice, and then I'm doing a little orange underneath it. You can see it looks exactly like it's supposed to. A couple of gashes in the armor. I mean, it's dope. Uh, it's a super easy technique. You, you don't even need there to be three-dimensional gashes in the armor to do this. You could just draw these scratches on armor if you wanted to. Like, this is super easy. Um, here we go, painting the, um, the skulls in the center field here. by same old earth. A Vallejo Air Earth. Um, and also a quick shout out. Do you see these um, the broke armor pattern on these greaves? My brother had to grease up those. I mean, they don't come that way. Um, and obviously now I'm coming and dropping a highlight using some of that burnished gold and some of that, uh, what is it called? Sorry, Pri Privateer Press Molten Bronze mixed a little bit in with the burnished gold. And then just kind of wet blend it back and forth, get the highlight that you want. It is... A very important technique. You need to come back and highlight these big pieces of trim on these models. They're just too big to let the wash do over. And I mean, and it's time consuming. I'm not gonna lie. This is this is the part of the project where I put my tunes on and just zone out and try to just get it done as fast as possible because it is boring as hell. Uh, but it is the thing that makes the model look amazing. And here's some secret tech. Come in with some steel, some bright silver. Mix it in with the burnished gold and just do it on the final peaks of these of these arrows. It helps create an obviously more dramatic highlight. And I'm all and contrast is the name of the game. The, the more contrast you have in a model, the better it looks. Period. End of discussion. And you can see, don't overuse it. Just come in in a couple of little little raised surfaces, like the, the final tips, that final little 90 degree angle. Let's come back in here and finish these skulls up real quick. Um, Obviously, I said I'm, I'm all over the place in this video, uh, but I'm trying to show you guys the process. Like while one thing is being done, a wash is drying or a seal coat is, is drying, I can go finish this off. When this is done, I'll put it down, go back to one of those pieces, then come back to this. It is essentially the, the like how I organize my my painting table to be as fast as possible. I don't sit there and paint one thing till completion, then the next thing. You kind of have to work it like an assembly line, like how to how to work all the pieces and nurture them together in the right order so you're never waiting on something to do the next thing. I always have something to do while I'm waiting for something to dry. And it's important to seal coat in between stages with these types of big models, these resin models especially. I like to use the, t the testers uh, model masters. Anyway, let's jump right back into it. Uh, got the oxide out on the brass now. So you can see, you can see the cutscene there. I, I didn't show you guys, but I did splash some Typhus Corrosion on the Greaves. Uh, must have forgot to turn my camera on for that, but you can see, I've, I've, uh, I've showed you in other videos how to do that effect. 
that was a little bit of a sponge technique there. But now I'm coming in with that oxide, and I'm really put laid it on thick for the uh, the the that brass uh, armor, dropping a couple of streaks off, making it look chaos as hell, man. I love these technical effects. They are made for this type of thing, man. This these chaos models, like I mean, look how look how crucial this guy looks. I mean, he is an absolute badass, man. The but check out the sword here. So like, don't forget. Check out my sword video, my power weapon video. I actually finished this sword off to completion in a separate video, giving you guys a whole additional 10 minutes of work on how I did this sword, so I wouldn't have to skip over it. And also, I wouldn't have to insult you guys by doing a whole weekly tutorial <laughs> on just this sword. All right, guys, let's jump right into it. Masking tape. I'm going to just simply tape off the hilt, all the cool stuff I've done, all the little details. Don't want to get too um, too crazy here. It's not necessary. Uh, as a matter of fact, you probably could just use, you know, any old thing, piece of paper, putty. I mean, I just, I'm going to use paper and tape just to show you guys that I can do both. <laughs> um, so, the, so the thing here that you want to be careful of. It's like, no matter how little the piece is, you might get, you know, oversprays a thing. So just, however much you think you need to block out, double that. Because you you always end up messing it up otherwise. It's just words of wisdom, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, the first step of this is going to be really easy. We're just going to lay down Meridian Blue, which is one of my favorite colors from P3. It's like an OG hawk turquoise color. I'm gonna just lay it down. Super thick. I'm gonna lay it down over black because the black helps the helps me get the darkest, you know, possible uh, turquoise effect out of here. You'll see here in the video, I'm kind of hesitant, like I'm not just laying it down like I normally do. That's because at this stage, I'm not quite sure which crossfade effect I'm gonna utilize. Like if I'm gonna do light to dark, dark to light. What side of the blade? I'm, I'm still kind of thinking it over as, I, as I'm spraying it on. Uh, normal, just just lay it down. Like I mean, what I what what I ended up deciding uh, I was gonna do would have just been easier just to lay it down from the beginning. Which now you see I'm actually making that decision here. I lay it down. The next thing we're gonna do, snag up that arcane blue, which is one of my favorite uh, colors as well. I'm gonna use that to highlight what we just did with the meridian blue now highlighting you'll see i'm going to do the top it's going to be light and the bottom is going to be light but only on one side i'm not wasting time because i'm going to do that crossfade whatever i do on like that side of the blade it's going to be the, the reverse on the other side so i'm just blending in a nice subtle transition light dark then light really easy the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab some of that dead white for the new uh vallejo game air we're going to mix it in about 50 50 with the arcane blue I'm just going to burn those tips out a little bit more on the top and on the bottom, not in the middle. As I said, it's it's an interesting effect. It's going from transitioning from light to dark back to light. That's just the effect I'm going for. Real simple. Now we're going to go pull out that dead white again for some pure white action. Like as I always say, make sure that your tip is clean. Keep your little toothbrush handy. Maybe drop a little bit extra white in the pot because white white is a bitch, man. It can, it can, it can really just mess your, your whole day up so take your time nurture it don't just blast it on feather it into that pure white to get that totally crisp sheen that's the effect we're going for this is remember this is they're supposed to be making something look like it's shiny metal blue without painting it shiny metal so metal oftentimes only looks metal because it has incredibly pure white uh, transitions now the black we're gonna have to go back into that center void that i was telling you about like you'll see what i mean by going light dark back to light right now you'll see the center is dark but only on that one side like i said we're gonna whatever we do on this side of the blade it's flip side on the other side so there it is that's kind of the effect we're going for what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna seal coat this i'm gonna let it dry for a little bit then i'm gonna lay this masking tape down on it now what we're doing is what we masked off was the thing we just did all that painting what everything we just did i'm doing it again in reverse so the center will be light and the and the tips will be dark 
it's it's a very simple concept to understand. Like, this is not the only way to blend uh, this crossfade. Sometimes I go literally light to dark, no light dark back to light. And then on the other side, I do the reverse. Sometimes I just go light to dark on both sides of the blade. And honestly, I think that would have been the best look here. But I really got caught up in doing the crossfade in the ZOG way. And as you can see now, I'm back into mixing the uh, dead white and 50-50 with the uh, arcane blue, I think. So I'm creating that radial burst out of the center. Maybe that's just pure arcane. Uh, so we're, yeah, we're, burnt, we're sunbursting out of the center. And it's a cool effect, as you can see. Like, it does look cool. The brighter it gets. Here's that pure white. Like I was saying, it's just looking super poppy. So after this, we're going to peel the tape off very carefully and take a look at what we have. And it should look pretty neat. But, um, I'm oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. Still got to do the black. Got to get that extreme contrast, that transition, that super hard black transition to the white. Um, after this stage, we will gently pull off the, the masking tape and see what we have. And like I said, I think it's cool looking, but I think I should have gone just to the traditional burnout on, on the tips because of the weird die cut nature of this blade. This blade is, might not be optimized for it, but I don't, I mean, I'm not unsatisfied with it. So here you go. You see there, my problem is that center void. See, I painted black now just to give you some more contrast. Uh, and I'm going to paint some of the servo ligaments in there, like some of those like power weapon pieces. I'm going to paint those pure gold. As you can see, now it's starting to, now it's starting to look a little bit more like how I wanted to. It's not quite there yet. So I start edge highlighting the, the white back in. And now you're getting that total effect I'm looking for. That's, that's how I envision it. Very simple, man. Like that, it pro that process took me maybe including dry times 30 minutes to do that whole thing. And like, you could never do that with a paintbrush. Impossible. Well, guys, thanks for watching this. I'll hit you guys back. Now that you guys have checked that out, hopefully, um, some of the, the inner workings of that crossfade effect, uh, with the tape and everything is more attainable. Real simple. Like I use a couple of really, uh, good brands of masking tape from the local hobby stores, etc. Um, you know, like it's, it's really easy. It's all about taking your time, making sure the seal coat's dry so you don't undo the things you've done. Just want to thank you guys for continuing to subscribe to the page. And I want to continue to thank you all for supporting. Uh, that is so helpful. In the meantime, thanks for watching, players. Here it is guys, part three, painting a Chaos Night Titan. We're hitting you with that quick OSL effect. I'm using Meridius Blue from Privateer Press. It's one of my favorite blues of all time. Definitely for this OSL effect. I recommend going out, picking it up. It's super good. See, we're just, what I did actually first, I prepped it. I painted it with a paintbrush, like the crystal there, that little weird chaosy crystal. And now I'm just going in and like just lightly dusting the surrounding cables and gun barrels were just that, you know, that same color, just to give you that, that OSL spectrum. I'm not trying to paint it with, 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 with the airbrush. Like it was easier to paint it with a paintbrush and just like missed it with the OSL to try to get that effect. I find it goes much faster. As you can see here now, it's getting lighter. That's because I picked out Arcane Blue. Yet again, my other favorite blue for Privateer Press. Arcane Blue is so good is the natural transition for this Meridius blue. It's super fresh and clean. I mean, just look at that little, just subtle, but really hard, amazing transition. So we finished that up. Obviously, I tossed a little white on it too. You know, you've seen it. Check out any of my um, earlier videos uh, on technical effects. Now let's do these horns. This is like one of the most interesting parts of this guy. We're using the old Vallejo Air Earth. And I'm just kind of laying down a quick little transition back to the original earth color after I washed it. Just real light. 
because uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get crazy with it. So just build it up. Be careful not to spray it all over the cables. Get your angle right. You know, this is um one of those times that you just want to be patient and methodical. But sometimes, even a pro has to um get some training wheels, and that's about all I can do without them. So you see a really nice smooth beginning but that's not I want to do more than that he looks great like I'm not gonna lie I'm just <laughs> I'm very happy with this guy I'm proud of him but let's finish this guy up right now we're gonna go in peek out those horns drop some whites in there mix them in with that earth really make that horn look clean and transition here's the training wheels I was talking about you can see I just used some paper use some tape and I'm trying to just cover his shoulders up and his hair the best I can. Just I don't, I'm trying to get down in there, but I don't want to spray this all over his red. I can get a little bit on the cables. It doesn't matter because I can really go in there and just dry brush it off the cables. That's fine. But I'm not like spraying it on there on purpose. If it gets there, it gets there. But I'm really actively trying to avoid it. I mean, look and look at it is. Look at that transition. Nice ivory, bony white. I mean, looking super clean. <laughs> I mean, he. He reminds me of one of those dogs with those um, cones on. So I'm coming in with the darker burnt umber, and I'm going down to the beginning of the of the intrusion, the, how the horn comes out of the guy's head. But I'm finding those areas and burning them out, and being careful, like I said, not to get it all over the cables. But our dog cone, as it were, is making it so that we don't get any of this on the red. There he is, just looking clean. I mean, he's basically done here. Don't forget. Follow those links in the beginning of this uh, episode. I have all the basing and sword tech already laid out for you. 20 more. All right, guys. Out. Step one, dry brushing. Obviously, I started with a black primer. Coming in with just a couple of standard grays. This is nothing special. Pick out your favorite gray. It is not, this is the part where you don't really need to know the colors I'm using because black plus white equals gray. Nothing special here. The dry brush technique you guys have seen me utilize it before. It's super easy. Big flat brush. Keep that paint dry. Yeah, but sometimes you don't have to keep it that dry. Like I like sometimes to build up a streak. And that's what I'm kind of doing here. I'm not I'm not going with that ultimate dry pigment style of dry brushing, but more of a streakier dry brushing. A little bit sloppier on the edges, but when you come back in and you cut in with all the paints, it's really not going to matter. It's going to tighten it up and give you more of a weathered, uh, you know, derelict look versus that really dry antique look. Uh, you just got to go with your heart when you dry brush. It is the simplest technique, but it is the most utilized technique I would have to assume in the world of uh, miniature painting. I mean, I remember the first book that published about this kind of stuff. You know, this was <laughs> this was a, a lost art or something, man. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to come in with some Harvest Brown here in a second. This is one of my favorite colors. Pick it up if you get an opportunity. It's a Reaper. Uh, master series paint I believe I just quickly threw a couple of airbrush strokes on I forgot to film that but I will show you guys this next stage which is the Reaper orange brown these are the two best oranges sorry the two best browns in the game Harvest Brown and orange brown get them put them in your collection almost uh, now I'm gonna snag up some gun gray this is also one of my favorite metals in the game this is a Vallejo air color like one of the just easiest to brush ons Gonna, it's a real good mid-tone, kind of medium, uh, gray, silver. It's like gray that's metallic. Like that's the best way to describe this paint. Come in, slather it on. Now here's the heat. Best color. You know it's my favorite. There's some Tyvus corrosion going in. So this is the first time I'm going to show you the close-up of the sponge technique, and I'm going to do it with Tyvus corrosion. You saw I just put a bunch of blobs on there built it up and now I'm just kind of sponging the blobs, fanning them out, getting really aggressive, but also, you know, I know when not to just, you know, hit it too hard. And you can see the close up here. It, I mean, it, it's dry in the process of drying and there's, a, there's texture to it, man. It's like actual textured rust. So to, to control it more, to get more details, you just sometimes you got to like put it on with the paintbrush before you sponge it. And that's kind of what I'm doing with the Tyvus Corrosion. As you can see, I'm getting the cuts. I'm getting between all those cogs and everything. I mean, this this is actually really easy, man. Like I said, it's not 
it's it's almost mindless. Like once you've done this a few times, this is one of those techniques that you can just apply this to so many things and you can get it to look good. You can have a beyond tabletop quality look to your models, relatively little investment. That's kind of the bringing hobby back element to this. I want everyone to have good looking models, but I also don't want people to spend two years on, uh, you know, their one army because a part, big part of this hobby is playing with our models. So that's what these tips and these tactics and that's what these uh, techniques are all about. Just, uh, you know, time analysis, bringing more to the tabletop in a, in, a, in, a, in a little bit less time so you can have more time for the playing of, the, of, our, of our toys. As you can see here, it's coming along pretty well. We're building some rust up, getting that corrosion, that texture in there. And I go back over the same spots a couple more times in some situations because I do like to build that texture up. I think it gives it a super tactile quality, like a realistic rust, especially when you come back in and you know you start applying your metals to it later, as you guys have seen in some of my previous videos of how I dry brush over it. But here's the rise of rust, or I like to call it the rise of rust. I'm gonna sponge some of this on in a very similar way, but I'm gonna apply the rust directly to the sponge, which these sponges are just pluck and pull foam that I saved up. And you can see how I carved the tip to be kind of sharp. I'm just coming in there, dabbing it on. It's very easy. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> just get aggressive, but not too aggressive. If you do get, if you do kind of mess up and you do kind of come on heavy, I mean, just feather it out. Just that's, just go with it. Like, don't start over. <laughs> just that's how heavy it is now and don't forget you can always come back in with the typhus corrosion and fix any mistake you do here so it is literally a all hands on deck jump right into it kind of technique you will you don't have to be you know feather uh, feather feathering anything and you just go i mean look how hard i'm pressing this much with this model i mean it's <laughs> it's so easy and it, you get such a good such a good technique out of it uh I do like to overuse it in some situations because I do like the look of uh, the the wasteland. <laughs> but playing too much Fallout. But as you can see here, it's uh, it's starting to look really sharp. This base. I, I mean, like all those streaks are coming out really nice. And so you can see here now, I'm, I'm sponging uh, a little bit of Tyvus corrosion back in. Like I was saying, just to, just to clean up some of that rust that, that came in too hot and too heavy. Now I'm right back to the Rizm Rust. I mean, I'm putting this thing on, on spots that doesn't look like it should be. Just because it's interesting, man. When you have a lot of colors popping off in different directions, I think it looks cool. Even if it's on some something that you don't normally think it should be on. And I mean, really sharp, really clean, but still really dirty. That's kind of one of my signatures. So everyone's got to find their signature, but all I can do is show you guys how I do my stuff coming around wrapping it up putting this rust on everything this corrosion on everything I mean see I'm even two handing it now double fisting <laughs> I got some typhus corrosion in the left hand I got some rizzo rust on the right hand just going see there you go right there look at that I mean it's 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 just like I said it's a technique that rewards you for being aggressive and just bending that 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 paint to your will don't don't you don't you don't have to you don't even respect the paint man like this <laughs> this paint this paint you own this paint coming into the next stage here really quick uh after i drop a couple more layers of timeless corrosion in some of the corners i think i'll be ready to move on to possibly the oxide effects now i'm gonna take a second to talk about the oxide effects the oxide is a really interesting uh watery paint but I, what I notice about it is that you have to kind of water it down if you don't it will absolutely ruin the paintbrush you're using <laughs> so be careful with that and like I said we're coming right up to the oxide effect right now what I'm doing is I'm just using that gray to wipe out some of the uh, overspray and some of the slop sharpen it back up again as you can see, like now we're, you know, it's very HD, very in focus, a very sharp looking, looking base. Obviously, you want to dry brush the peaks of these little rocks out with a little bit of white. That's how you get it to look truly realistic. 
very easy effect. I mean, we're literally just compiling techniques on top of techniques in this video. We're, we have barely used, utilized any actual true skill, just technique, hobby technique. Not everyone is an artist, but everyone wants to play this game and they want to have their models look fresh. And <laughs> you can't, I mean, you can't argue with it. I mean, this, this is looking fresh. And you know, the funny thing about this video is only some parts of it are sped up, some parts of it are not. This video is pretty close to about half as long as it takes to make this base. And this video is barely over 10 minutes long. I mean, I may have spent 25 minutes working on this base. So <laughs> that's, that's how compelling the technique, the technique is. So now let's hit that oxide like I promised. Like I said, I'm, I'm just watering it down a little bit, drawing the lines in. Like this is the only thing that takes a little bit of skill. So I'm actually drawing, drawing the, the streaks. I'm not sponging it on. I'm not just slathering it on. You actually do have to control this a little bit. So this is the this is where you want to slow down and not and not coming too hot. This is definitely you do have to respect the oxide. The oxide will the, it will punish you if you don't respect it. It will make your model look terrible. But and, and just wherever you think you should use it, use it in half the places that you think you should because it's really easy to go overboard with this effect. And, but you do, and you do want to get those streaks though because like whenever you see that oxide in places, it should be streaked. That's kind of the effect it was designed for. The paint kind of like layers on itself really well for that. So don't just draw it or draw a line in places if you, if you have an opportunity to actually streak it out. And you want to use, the problem with it is you want to use a pretty decent brush for this. But you don't want to use your best brush because, like I said, it's going to jack your brush up, man. This is, I don't know what they put in it, but whatever they did, it is not good for paintbrushes. And you, you can see in some areas, like this tile, it's really easy to use to just paint it right into those tiles, right into those recesses. It's kind of a paint by numbers effect. You, you know, really, really easy as long as you respect it. See, see how watered down it is there? And that's how you get that kind of that layer of like it's, it's really heavy in one spot but immediately starts transitioning into a more translucent version of itself in the next spot it took me months to figure out how to do that because i was just putting it on raw dog you know just so heavy and i do that with a lot of things like a lot of washes and stuff and i swear by it but in this paint can't tell you enough respect it so i'm coming into the final part of this base just super quick Use some basic PVA glue, layer it on super thick, just, I mean, just no water, just put this thing on thick. Put it on thick, build it up, and just start dumping these leaves on it. These leaves are such a cool effect, I like putting them on everything. I mean, I have basically find an excuse to utilize these leaves on every project I have now because I think they are new and fresh. I think there's also something about like a really derelict wasteland of like of really crazy colors. And something that you don't expect to see is kind of that beauty of fall. But so I, I feel like that's awesome. And, you know, it's kind of like the old, you know, like a flower growing in a in the middle of a battlefield. You know, like it, 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 the fact that it doesn't belong is why it belongs for me. And so here it is. We got all our leaves on it, did all of our effects. Utilize some of these techniques we talked about, some dry brushing, some sponging, all of that. Guys, please don't forget to check out some of my other videos. 